Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen Welcome to our worship service this morning in the name of our crucified and risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Special welcome to any visitors that we have with us. We're glad to have you here and invite you to come and be with us again. We also welcome those who join us for worship out in the parking lot through our radio broadcast. We're glad to have you join us. And just a reminder that our worship services are video recorded and are available through the church website when they are posted early this coming week. Uh, I have one announcement that I, I call your attention to the announcements in the bulletin, and I have an additional one. The family uh, gave me a note that Tom and Verdine Brinkmeyer are celebrating their 68th anniversary tomorrow and wanted to make a special effort to be in worship today uh, to celebrate that uh, with their community of faith. Susie, I know you have some announcements as well. Just a couple things. Um, today is Dollars for Food Sunday. There's an offering plate out in the, the North X. Uh, just to mention that when you make those donations, they're able to purchase, uh, through the Burton Bridge Ministry, purchase uh, six times as much for the dollars that you donate as you would if you spent that in the store. Also... Uh, we continue our monthly collection this month being baking items such as cooking oil, flour, and sugar. And we're going to be, because of Easter, and then also remember on April 30th, the, all the services uh, here will be online because of the MS-150. So uh, if you think about it and you're out in the store, grab an extra bag of flour, extra bag of sugar, and the tote is also out there in the North X. So we would appreciate that. Dollars for food and Burton Bridge Ministry donations of cooking items. Thank you. We continue our Easter celebration, the second Sunday of Easter, as we give thanks to God and celebrate Christ's resurrection from death and his promises for us. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ and strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Kyrie eleison Christ eleison Kyrie eleison The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Luther's Small Catechism, The Morning Blessing. How the head of the house is to teach the members of the household to say morning blessings. In the morning, as soon as you get out of bed, you are to make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, watch over me. Amen. Then, kneeling or standing, 
say the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. If you wish, you may recite this little prayer as well. I give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected me through the night from all harm and danger. I ask that you would also protect me today from sin and all evil, so that my life and actions may please you. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. Invite the children forward for the children's sermon. Good morning. Thank you for coming up. You already know what I have. I just bought this yesterday. What do I have here? A yo-yo. You know, I have never been good with a yo-yo. So do one of you want to show me how a yo-yo works? Several of you can do it. So stand up. Let's see see how you can do the yo-yo. Okay, that's fine. That wind it up and somebody else can try it here. There you go. Who wants to try it now? What? We'll we'll go over here. Okay? Stand up. So, show us how the yo-yo works here. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't I didn't do it, so you may have to wind it up tighter there. Okay, there you go. All right, let's watch it. Here it comes. Here we go. Let's see that yo-yo. There we go. Okay, pull it up. And let's wind it up again. Can you wind it up? You want to try it? Okay, we're going to see another yo-yo here. Okay. Here we go. Let's watch let's watch this one. Okay, try it again. Okay, stop it there. Pull it up and stop it. There we go. Now, who wants to try it? Okay, we have a couple more that want to try it. That's good. Yeah, it may not be catching in there, so... Okay, here we go. Very good. Okay, let's wind it up and we'll have one more do it right there. There we go. Let's see if we can. Okay, good. Yeah, so what does a yo-yo do? Um, you put it on your shoulder and then when you're ready to drop it, you drop it. You drop it and what does it do? It goes back up. A yo-yo goes up and down, up and down, up and down. That's what a yo-yo is, is designed to do. Some folks have learned how to do tricks. Like I say, I never, I never uh, did uh, very good with that. So, let me ask you, 
Are people like yo-yos sometimes? Do you feel good some days and some days you don't? Yeah, some days are better than others, aren't they? People have an, a, a tendency to go up and down, up and down, just like a yo-yo. We're going to hear about one guy today in our gospel lesson that was on a yo-yo trip. His name was Thomas. He went, and actually all the disciples after Easter went like a yo-yo, up and down, up and down. They were excited about Jesus resurrecting, and then they didn't know quite what to believe. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Until Jesus appeared to Thomas, and then Thomas quit being a yo-yo because he was committed to Jesus. He actually believed then. So, today, when we think about a yo-yo, when we hear about Thomas, let's Remember that sometimes we're like yo-yos up and down, but that God wants us to, and if he's in our lives, we can stop being yo-yos, and we can live as his people all the time. All right? Thank you. The first reading is from the book of Acts, the second chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidentially, conf confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of all that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Psalm 16 will be read responsively. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied, their divisions of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot, my boundaries and close a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heart. I will, bless the, I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope, for you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. 
and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading comes from the book of 1 Peter, the first chapter beginning with the third verse. A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfailing. Kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while while you have had to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation and reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel lesson according to St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord! But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing 
you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus who is the Christ. Amen. Many years ago, a railroad proposed abandoning service on a spur line that ran into a small town. At the public hearing, which was held to gather opinions about the proposal, a farmer stood up and insisted that the railroad line was a vital necessity for the area. The representative of the railroad asked the farmer how often he shipped his crops to market on the railroad, and the farmer replied that he couldn't ever remember shipping anything anywhere on the railroad. Then the farmer was asked how often he rode on the train, and he replied that as best as he could remember, he had ridden on a train once about 10 or 15 years ago. Finally, the railroad representative asked him what was so important about this particular railroad spur line. And the farmer answered with some emphasis, Well, for crying out loud, I walked down almost every evening and watched a train go by. Farmer sounds a little bit like some people we have all met especially on this Sunday after the celebration of Easter last week. That farmer sounds very much like some people who were here last week but didn't make it back this week. People we might describe as being on the fringe of the church, just as that farmer was on the fringes of the railroad. Certainly, we can all describe those people who might qualify as fringe Christians. They prefer to have little to no involvement in the church. They have little to no involvement in the ongoing activities of the congregation. They have no share in the day-to-day -day life of the congregation. And yet, they do not want the church to go away. They want to be kept on a membership list and want the church to be around just in case they need it. Like to celebrate a Christmas program and Easter with family. Or to have people pray for them if they have a health or other problem. Or if they need it for a baptism, a confirmation, a wedding, a funeral, or a cheap burial plot. In our gospel lesson, we hear of someone a little like this. One who tended to be on the fringe of Jesus' group of disciples. This is Thomas. In most of the New, Tom New Testament, Thomas is rarely mentioned. We know that he had a nickname, Didymus, which in Greek means the twin, so we hear him mentioned as Thomas called the twin. In John chapter 11, Jesus says that he is going to Bethany because he has heard his friend Lazarus has died. And he wants to go there even though going there puts his life in danger. We are told, Thomas called the twin said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. We hear Thomas ask a question in John chapter 14. Here Jesus was trying to comfort the disciples by telling them he was going to prepare a place for them and would come again and take them to himself. Jesus ended this statement by saying, and you know the place where I am going. Thomas, confused, responds, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? 
To which Jesus replies, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. After our gospel lesson in John chapter 21, it's the last time we hear about Thomas. As we hear that he is one of the disciples who joined Peter in a fishing expedition. And Jesus appeared on the shore, told them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat, called them then ashore with their catch, and had breakfast with them on the beach. The beginning of our gospel lesson has Jesus appearing on Easter evening to a group of his followers who are locked in a house in fear. The aspect of Thomas being on the fringe is apparent here. For some reason that we are not told, Thomas was not with the group when Jesus appeared to them on that Easter day. When he is told that Jesus is alive, raised from death, Thomas was skeptical. He was not quick to accept this. He had missed seeing Jesus and he was not at all sure of accepting what the other disciples were telling him. He needed proof. He insisted, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. This is the reason Thomas is often called Doubting Thomas. We might say in a phrase we have heard often lately that Thomas was following the science. After all, science requires that we can observe and measure something in order to know about it. One week later, the gospel lesson tells us, Jesus came and stood among them. Thomas was present this time. And Jesus must have known about his doubt concerning the others as witness. After saying to the group, peace be with you, Jesus says to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hand. Stretch out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Now we do not know if Thomas even touched Jesus. But we do know his answer to Jesus my Lord and my God. Thomas came to believe. For Thomas, seeing is believing. And Thomas's belief had an enduring effect on his life. Though we do not hear much of Thomas again in Scripture, church tradition says Thomas had an important calling as an apostle one sent into the world to proclaim Jesus. Church tradition says Thomas was called by the Holy Spirit to witness in India. And Thomas's witness and work are seen as the beginning of Christianity in the Indian subcontinent. In fact, the Mar Thoma Church in India recognizes Thomas as its founder. And I have met Christians who are a result of Thomas's faithful calling. You see, for Thomas, seeing was believing, and believing was seeing. Because he came to belief in the crucified and risen Lord Jesus, Thomas has a new vision of what he is called to do as a believer in Jesus. For Thomas, believing is seeing. Church tradition says that Thomas was killed with a spear during prayer on the big hill near Madras, India. For Thomas, seeing was believing, and believing was seeing. He was willing to be killed for the witness he once doubted. When Thomas makes his confession of belief, Jesus responds to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen 
and yet have come to believe. This is a comforting response because Jesus is talking about us. We have come to believe without seeing the resurrected Christ in flesh and blood. Yet we have come to believe in him. And Jesus says we are blessed. Like Thomas, believing is seeing. Because we believe, we see our calling as followers of the risen Lord Jesus. Like Thomas, the Holy Spirit calls us to live and witness to Jesus as crucified and risen Lord and Savior. There's a story told about the famed Zumbrati who walked a tightrope across Niagara Falls. Conditions were less than ideal. It was a windy day and the performer was thankful to have made it safely across. One of those waiting to congratulate him was a man with a wheelbarrow. I believe that you could walk across pushing this wheelbarrow, the man told him. Zumbrati shook his head and said he felt fortunate to have accomplished the feat without a wheelbarrow. The man urged him to try. I believe that you can do it, he said. The aerialist graciously declined, but the man kept after him. Finally, the performer said, you really do believe in me, don't you? Oh, I do, the man assured him. Okay, Zumbrotti replied, get into the wheelbarrow. While the man may have believed Zumbrotti could push the wheelbarrow across Niagara Falls, was he willing to place his faith in him by climbing into the wheelbarrow? Would you? You see, it's one thing to see and know with the mind. It's another thing to believe and see with the heart. Thomas got into Jesus' wheelbarrow. And he went where he was called. The question is, will you get into the wheelbarrow of Jesus now, in our time, and our place? Does your faith and belief lead to seeing the call of Jesus? Every congregation, including St. Paul of Rayburg, needs to ask if they are seeing and living in a long enough vision of Jesus' calling. If our vision is only getting together again next week, or just getting through the month, or just getting through the year, our vision is probably too limited. Now we may not be called to go to India, but there are Indias we are called to in Rayburg, in Burton, in Washington and surrounding counties, indeed in any context we encounter. Our calling is not just to be comfortable within our group, but to get into the wheelbarrow and witness wherever the Holy Spirit calls us to be. And we can be sure there are people out there, like Thomas, skeptical, looking closely to see if we will show them Jesus in our thoughts, words, and deeds. In a sense, they are on the edge of the church looking at us and deciding if we really live out our belief. If our confessed belief makes a difference in our lives and the way we live them individually and together and deciding if they will join us in this ministry that we say is so important. In the gospel, Jesus came and stood among the disciples and Thomas. When Thomas was out on the fringe of the group of disciples, Jesus went out to where Thomas was. And he gave as much of himself as was necessary to overcome Thomas and his doubts. That is important. 
Jesus did not give up on Thomas. He did not simply leave Thomas out there on the fringes. He went to him and brought him back. And when Thomas came back, he came back with one of the clearest statements in the entire New Testament about personal faith in Christ. He answered Jesus by saying, My Lord and my God. There are still people like Thomas around today, people on the fringe of the church, friend Christians who come on Christmas and Easter, and perhaps because they feel they should be in church or they need the church for something, but these friends Christians are so often scorned in the church. Like Thomas, these people are simply not around when all the excitement happens. And as it was to Thomas, the absence of Christ can be a very real thing for these Christians. Like Thomas, many friends Christians are not ready to listen. They're not ready to believe. Instead, they simply hang around the fringe, waiting to see Jesus. Waiting for Jesus to come and stand among them. And that is our calling. We are called to stand with Jesus among them. And this is what makes it so important that we are serious about how we live together. Everything, everything we do and say is witnessing either for or against Jesus. How we support each other, how we work together or not, how we disagree and argue with each other, witnesses to our faith in Jesus. And this is most important for our youth. You see, how we live together is teaching them each and every day. We need to believe so that they see for 50 or more years into the future. For how we witness to Jesus is affecting their future witnesses to Jesus. You see, we are teaching and modeling how we live as Jesus' people for those who will follow us decades from now. How is our believing resulting in seeing? And how are we doing at sharing and modeling this vision for the long future God is calling us to? John makes clear that our believing and seeing are important matters of eternal life. At the end of our gospel lesson, John gives a summary of why he wrote his gospel. Listen to what he says. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. How we witness to our belief and seeing is related to having life through Jesus Christ. There's a story of, of a, about a congregation that was attempting to grow. Many people in the community had been identified as potential members and the congregation asked for volunteers to visit these prospective members one Sunday afternoon. Among the volunteers was a gentleman named Fred. Now Fred was a wonderful person, but he had a problem with stuttering. One of the prospective members was a wealthy judge who had been approached by every congregation in town. When it came time for the visitors to draw names, Fred and his wife drew the judge's name. With great trepidation, the pastor sent them out to visit the judge. Sometime later, they came back to the church and acknowledged that their visit had not been at all successful. The next Sunday, the judge and his family came to worship. The pastor was astonished, and he drew the judge aside and asked him why he had come to worship. 
the judge smiled and told about Fred's visit. Fred drove up in his old jalopy, up the circular drive and parked. Then he got out of the car and came to the front door and rang the bell. When the judge answered the door, Frank had asked him if he was concerned about the condition of his immortal soul. When the judge had stated that he hadn't thought about it, Fred responded, that, 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 Then you are g g g going to hell! At that, the judge smiled again and told the pastor, Of all the people who have come up that drive, and asked me to worship with them, Fred was the first person who expressed a personal interest in me. Although the specific words Fred used could probably be better, the general attitude cannot be improved upon. For Thomas, for Friends Christians, what is needed is a personal approach. Not from someone who looks down on them or it's their job, but someone like Jesus, like Fred, like you. Someone who comes and stands among them. You see, this is key. As witnesses to Jesus, we are to connect people to Jesus's and our personal interest and concern for them. As Jesus came and stood among Peter, among Thomas and Peter and the other disciples gathered in that room, so we are called, called to go and stand among all we encounter in our lives as witnesses to the crucified and risen Lord Jesus. We are called to mindful, careful, and faithful approaches of how we witness to Jesus by how we think, speak, and act as individuals and in our life together in the congregation. For Thomas, seeing was believing, but then believing was seeing. And seeing his calling led him to follow Jesus to places he couldn't imagine. To do things he never thought he could. And to die in the grace of his Lord. Even though he had denied him and doubted him. Because believing meant seeing the eternal life of Jesus. Jesus calls us blessed because we have not seen and yet have come to believe. And our belief has importance for witnessing to others so that they may have life in Jesus' name. May we be faithful in our calling. May our belief be seeing what God has called us to be and do. And may we be faithful in how we think, speak, and act as people called by the name of Christ. Amen.
please stand for the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following the women at the tomb, empower us to boldly share your radical love through our words and our work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As you breathed your spirit into the disciples, breathe your spirit of healing upon all creation. Nourish the earth with sufficient rains. Strengthen us to counter the effects of pollution and destruction. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You prepared the disciples for their ministry by calming their fears and granting them your peace. Equip our community's leaders. Give them a spirit of peace and hearts that burn for justice, that their leadership reflects your love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You come among us in unexpected ways. Send us to those who hide in fear or question your love. Be with those to whom death draws near. Be a healing presence for any isolated by addiction, incarceration, mental illness, chronic pain or sickness, especially Charles Landaway, Bobby Bridauer, Doug Harmel, Barry Lee Goldberg, Lindley Kosarek, Terry Tiemann, Clinton Heine, Deanna Sully, Linda Aberhart, Danny Riggs, Andre Delacroix, Brenda Varner, Jane Herzog, Vaughn Yeager, Kenny Von Gonten, and others we now name. Jill Dave. Be with those who grieve, especially the family of Kenneth Neenstead and others we now name. Wise family. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. As you appear to the disciples in the locked house, show us your presence among our journeys. Bless our doubts and questions. Provide trusting and safe relationships for all ages to nurture our connection to you and one another. Hear us, O oh God. Resurrecting God, you bring us to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with companions on our faith journey, especially those who now rest in your love. Strengthen us with the eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share that peace with one another. response to God's love and grace, we bring our offering.
Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. For those who are to receive communion in the pews or in the cars, please prepare your elements for communion now. If you need a communion set, please notify the ushers. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly we are bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son. For he is the true Passover Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Through Abraham, you promised to bless all nations. You rescued Israel, your chosen people. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise, and at this end of all the ages, you sent your Son who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witnesses of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For those communing in the pews or in the cars, take the bread and eat it. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take the cup and drink it. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Mm -hmm.